The vintage motocross took place on the traditional English-style grass track. The event was open to pre-1973 dirt bikes. Even the rain didn't dampen the spirit of the competition. Tell us about this bike, Dick. Uh, this is called a, a Tribsa. And it's uh, not common in the United States, but in England it was a very common bike in the early 60s. It's uh, basically what it is, is a BSA with a Triumph engine. It's got a BSA chassis, gearbox, clutch and assembly and everything. Now, tell us about your bike. Bike, it's a 1974 Mako, uh, which was uh, purchased here at Steamboat Springs last year and went back to New York and got restored and uh, raced with Unadilla last year for second place. And this is my uh, first ride this year on it. Don't What's know. Name? Yeah. Beano Rody. Where are you from? Atlanta, Georgia. And what are you riding today? 810 Norton. <laughs> All right, Rick, Rick, can you tell us about this bike? Well, this is a Rickman Triumph. The Rickmans were made from uh, the early 60s to the mid 70s, and they're an English frame. Uh, completely brazed together, nickel plated, very specialized. Uh, made specifically for motocross before there were actual motocross bikes manufactured. Uh, now Rickmans especially manufacture these Triumph engines, right? Actually the, the Rickmans were originally uh, set up as an adaptation to a Gold Star frame and they put fiberglass bodywork on it. Then they went and started producing it for Matchless, for BSA, for Triumph. Uh, they went into the two strokes later on in the 70s with the Zundaps and Montessas. So they have a, a, quite an array of, of frames. And you bought them as a kit and then you did, you bolted them together yourself for the most part. I'm Heather Larson, I'm from Denver and I'm riding this yellow CZ, it's a 72 in the women's class. The English-style grass course was designed by Dick Mann. This, uh, this course is laid out very similar to uh, the way the motocross was laid out in the very beginning uh, in Europe. Uh, basically, it was done in, in just the big fields and the, any natural terrain that they could, that they could uh, come up with for a motocross circuit. As time has gone on and technology and things, and uh, naturally the lack of open spaces and land, uh, the modern racing is more condensed into a smaller area. And also with the technology of the bikes, uh, just a flat field like this with the natural terrain that's in there is not demanding enough for a modern motorcycle, so they have to manufacture very large obstacles and jumps. But this, this just uses the lay of the land for the obstacles the way the land lays in the gullies and what is ever is laying in the field. And our motorcycles are not very far along technology-wise, and this is actually fairly rough and demanding for our bikes, for the suspension of our bikes. But early motocross racing is all about making the turns and racing around turns. We're trying to recreate the early days of real uh, European motocross, and this, this field especially in this area is absolutely perfect. This event, like the trials, drew vintage bikers from all over the United States. These racers are here for the fun of it. But that doesn't mean there's no competition. They're all here to race, and that means to win. Let's take a look at some of the early action. They started cloudy and cool, but as events wore on, it began to look more and more like the weather would turn wet.
It indeed did. And the track became a bit on the muddy side. But that didn't stop the spirit of the competition. And as the skies opened up, the riders started to slip and slide through the course. The track dried out a bit, and I thought you'd like to take a ride around the course.
As you walk among the riders, you find a camaraderie rare in competition sports. The riders help each other out with parts and advice. And as I said before, they come from all over. Name's Quincy Britt from Houston, Texas. Tony Glacier. Which classes are you going to run? 125 to 50 expert. We're with BNS Racing out of Houston, Texas. What's your name? Bernard Murphy. Tom Kennedy, Salt Lake City, Utah. I'm going to be riding this uh, 450 Husky. Bill Patton and I hope I'm riding this today. I'm from Hutchinson, Kansas. Yeah, my name's Paul Duchesne. I'm from Fullerton, California. My name is John Sawaski. I'm from Golden, Colorado. I'm going to be riding whatever runs here. Dan Davies, San Francisco. My name's Doug Wenzel. I'm from New Jersey. They came from everywhere. And there were entire families riding, too. My name is Bob Ginder. I'm from Tennessee. And uh, I have a sawmill in the construction business, and I ride a 1963 Greaves. And you ride with your son, too, right? And my grandson. My name is Bob Ginder. I'm riding a 61 model MCS Greaves. Uh, and I have a motorcycle shop that deals and builds specialty observed trials bikes. Where's that? In Dixon, Tennessee. Dustin Ginder from Dixon, Tennessee. You know. I'm not riding bikes, I'm playing basketball and baseball. And going to school? Yeah, that too. And the competition didn't stop short of poking fun at other riders' bikes. But it's all in fun. Because as you can see, you'll find some of the finest vintage bikes competing. Indians, Can-Ams, Boltacos, Ducatis, BSAs, Hondas, and many more representing racing's past. Chris Cook, San Diego, California. Well, can you tell us about your bike, Chris? It's a Cheney frame. They were produced in 1968. Uh, they made 100 of them for a 650 Triumph engine. And I just put it together. I haven't even ridden it. This will be the first race I've ridden in 25 years. What's special about this bike? Uh, well, it was made for motocross. Um, when they used to run big heavy bikes like this in motocross. I just bought it last year, I've been sitting about 15 years. The engine was rebuilt 15 years ago, and I put it in, started up, and so far it's run. Cheney also made the forks. He was just a, like a, a little one-man shop in England. He made the forks, the wheels, uh, everything, pretty much. Quick can you tell us about your bike here? That's a 72 Husqvarna, 400 cross. Um, pretty much original. Just got it running last night, about midnight. So, tried to make it up here and go out here and get muddy for a while. What do you like about it? I like the way it handles. I think the Huskies, uh, as far as uh, this track and the straight line stability of a Husky is pretty hard to beat. Why is that? I think the, the wheelbase is a little bit longer on a Husky and they're originally designed to be a, a desert bike and they excelled at that. So, that's why I like it. My name is Larry Vansel. I'm from Sycamore, Illinois, Northern Illinois. What can you tell us about this uh, interesting machine here? It's a 1969 Brickstone 350. Not lacking for power, I imagine. No, it uh, spins the wheel more than it does anything else. Uh, you know, it's for fun. Uh, it's not too competitive, it's just fun. Is this a stock frame? Yes, sir. Sure is. The only thing that's not stock is a 21 inch front wheel. You can run it stock suspension, huh? Yeah, I sure do. Oh, you're a brave man. <laughs> Yeah, well, it has to be a pretty smooth track. Tell us your name, where are you from? Portland, Oregon. My name is Al Peter. You can tell us about the Can-Am here. I certainly can. It's a 250 rotary valve engine. It's made in Canada by Bombardier. They later had the engines made in Austria. And there, there are quite a number of them around, and uh, they were a good quality machine. You can still find them at reasonable prices. What are the special points about this bike? I think it was, uh, they didn't really, uh, Try to copy anybody else's designs. They did use a fresh piece of paper and came up with their own idea of what a what a cross bike should be like in 1974. First, tell us your name and where you're from. Jack Thompson from Texas, Texas Vintage Racing Club. Why'd you buy it? Because I like the six day 125s. I have another one that I that I raced out here yet, last year. And I didn't bring it this year, but this one's real original. I don't think I'll take the headlight off and do that. I think I'll leave it just like it is. This bike was manufactured in Austria, correct? Made in Austria, yeah. And this is not a sport just for men. Uh, my name's Kathy Gregorich. I'm from Denver, Colorado. I'm riding a 
72, DT 250, and in real life, I'm a registered nurse. <laughs> and I do this for fun on weekends. <laughs> How did you get into this? Oh, I've been riding motorcycles for over 20 years, and my boyfriend got me into racing. <laughs> he thought it was a nice way to spend my time. Good riders, a good course, and good competition. Mixed with the best of racing's past makes for pure fun and excitement. I thought you'd like to see these fabulous machines in competition one more time. age seemed to make no difference. This is Harry Higgins, still riding, and he's 73 years old. Uh, Harry Higgins, Bremen, Georgia, riding a B-50 PSA. Tell us about those boots. Well, they're about 30 years old, the old enduro boots. How many races have these boots seen? About 50, 60. How many of those races did you win? About 40. <laughs> what class are you riding today? Today I'm riding super senior, well, over 70, so they haven't got a class for me. <laughs> <laughs> How many years have you been riding? Oh, 54, 55 years. When are you going to stop? Never, I hope. <laughs> it's good exercise. That's Rocky Mountain Motocross and Trials. The racing was friendly, but competitive. Great course, a little challenging, 
a right of four line, which is still kind of considered the beginner line, and some of the guys who the bikes will also ride a four line. Um, interesting course, I like it. Steve, you're one of the very few men who made it through the gator pit today. What do you have to say about it? Total luck. <laughs> I got down in it and I saw a foot start to go and I fought back and and then I saw a foot start to go and fought back and the next thing I knew I got out through the gate. So, but it made my day. It started out pretty muddy and then it ended up being perfect. <laughs> Had a lot of fun and glad I came. It was a real good day for everybody, I think. Everybody seemed to have a lot of fun. And Most importantly, every one of these vintage bike enthusiasts was here for the fun. It couldn't have been better. Even the rain that was uh, cold and made the thing a real look like a mess for a while really put a lot of interest in it. And uh, um, it, you know, it was just it couldn't have been better. I can't say that enough. Uh, I, the the sport is all about having a good time and having fun. And there's nobody here that isn't grinning. Win or lose, it was a time to visit old friends and make new ones. Continuing to be and become a bigger and better and better event. And we're gonna have more people find out about it and it's just gonna continue to grow. And it's, and I hope you can see from the smiling faces that's why everybody does this. It's fun to see the old bikes running and smell the castro burning and everybody coming off patting each other on the back with a great race they had. And that's what it's all about. It's not trophies, it's not who won, it's just having fun.